Hey, welcome back. This is James Kelly. Thanks for tuning in again. This blog is Software Defined, a decade later. And I'm reading this on April 11th as it's getting posted. And as always, thank you just for following me, liking and sharing this wherever that may be. My website, jameskelly.net, on Juniper, SoundCloud, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, wherever. Really happy to have the support. So thanks, quick thanks for that. Okay, so let's get into it. Software defined a decade later. The first African-American president had been sworn in. The king of pop had just passed. Real Donald Trump had taken to tweeting. An avatar was about to smash box office records. But what I remember about the summer of 2009 is the dawn of software defined. Looking forward to tapas and sunglasses, I landed in Barcelona to present at SIGCOM on what was then a niche topic, network programmability. I was feeling good about my presentation on service creation with the Junos SDK, now known as JET. I'd trained many people on it, so I knew everything from its use cases to APIs like the back of my hand. Gung-ho, as I shook hands with people in the room, I was greeted with enthusiastic faces. A decade later, I don't remember the talk I do remember it's Q&A. Raised hands eclipsed my talk with many questions comparing our SDK to a similar demo and presentation from the day before that I had missed. Well, I'll be damned. I had followed, you guessed it, OpenFlow. For me, that was SDN's big bang moment. The ensuing unbridled enthusiasm for OpenFlow percolated up from this academic setting into a frenzy of new foundations and projects, controllers, APIs, and a smorgasbord of overlay and control protocols. As the networking industry was soon flush with SDN startups, many established players SDN watched anything that resembled software, and soon that spread to a software-defined movement that impacted all things infrastructure. Back then, en primeur, SDN, looked like a dicey proposition, but its preteen years have seen it mature in the data center and WAN. Today, software defined is almost a norm, expected to be poured over all places and network to keep up with the operational reliability and speed demanded of these times of cloud charge disruption. As multi-cloud infrastructure, the new IT platform, permits and needs greater automation, digital operations teams are impelled to a new status quo, software defined and AI driven. While we still hear of SDDC, SD-WAN, and SD-Branch, expectations today are that all places in network are ruled with software. And soon, if not already, that software must be AI-fueled for smarter AI ops and reliability engineered like DevOps. So putting aside expectations and buzzwords, let's objectively look at how SDN's moving along. 2019's litmus test is a far cry from the old standby of control and data plane separation. How is SDN evolving in the open? It's impossible to write an account of SDN without giving meaningful consideration to openness. In some enterprise engineering teams, closed and proprietary solutions are contraband, but when it comes to SDN, there are a few open source projects simple enough to operationalize right off the shelf of GitHub or Docker Hub. Commercially available products still carry the day. But a predilection for open source hangs heavy in the air as it brings the benefits of a community for discussion and sharing of automated workflow tools, frameworks, tests, and playbooks. While open source can introduce economies of multi-vendor engineering, testing, and co-creation with code-savvy customers, it's not replacing open standards. If such a replacement is looming, it's narrowly in the cloud-native space of securely connecting Kubernetes application clusters and service meshes. But where SDN stands to meet hardware top to bottom and where multiple SDNs meet to federate and span boundaries end to end, interoperability isn't yet forged in open source. Multi-vendor interoperability and multi-SDN system federation hinges on open standards-based protocols, especially those truly proven and widespread standards. Interoperability, of course, prevents technical debt and increases customer freedom. However, Customer freedom is an unlikely strategy <clears throat> for the largest vendor incumbents, which is why we still see some rival SDNs bound to vendor hardware and vendor workload orchestration systems. Interoperability should not be confused with overlays, which are merely agnostic to what IP network they ride on. 
Overlays provide separation of concerns, which is great. And like interoperability, they afford a way to insert into brownfield environments. But without interoperable network boundaries, overlay SDN solutions or islands eventually destines as technical debt, the ball and chain to IT progress. Security is shifting left. SDN openness may be in various shades of optional, but everyone understands security is a must because from the network engineer to the board of directors, people today are acutely aware of the specter of security breaches and attacks. Whether it's multi-tenancy, micro-segmentation, mutual identity, authentication, or secure SD-WAN based on next-gen firewalls, in both software development and network development, security has shifted left, moving it earlier on the timeline of project considerations. InfoSec used to be a rubber stamp at the end of projects, and now security is foundational and a first priority. With a progression of SDN, instead of only traditional secure perimeters, network security is now getting measured out in coarse and fine-grained means for multi-factor defense in depth. And in the race against advanced and automated threats, software-defined systems have also made it simpler to manage security policies and automatically enforce them by applying protection within the network faster than ever before. How is SDN evolving automation? Well, in the aftermath of the early SDN hype, the industry experienced progression on the front of orchestrating operations and regression from the focus on automating them. The evolution of controllers made automation turnkey, focusing on what instead of how. In data centers, the dynamic machinery inside of the network was automated in step with workflow orchestrators like vSphere, OpenStack, and today, more so Kubernetes and OpenShift. In the case of SD-WAN, orchestration meant dealing in zero-touch branch onboarding and choosing WAN policy levels for application traffic. Automation to regulate traffic steering across hybrid WAN uplinks was baked in. Great. Well, these are oversimplifications of SDN applications, of course, but across SDN domains, the thread is that one, control is centralized and abstracted above the device level to span a distributed fleet of infrastructure, and two, controllers automate workflows, orchestrating, reducing, and simplifying the steps. So the industry attention spent on adapting to software defined has, at least until recently, been mostly about these benefits of moving from commanding device CLIs to orchestrating controller GUIs. But orchestration implies automated networks, and it changes nothing about automated network king. Automated network operations, or NetOps, is the next frontier. While workflows are leveled up and centralized with SDN, so are workflow APIs, another key aspect of SDN systems. And with this, there's also the possibility to automate NetOps, evolving to automated testing, troubleshooting, change controls, service level indicators, and service level reliability. This is an area of network automation focused less on the automation technology inside of software-defined networks and more on the people and processes that will software-define operations. In this transformational movement that network engineers have dubbed Network Reliability Engineering, or NRE for short, a subject that we at Juniper have promoted a good deal, technology also plays an important role. SDN systems are important so that engineers are building on SDN abstractions and workflows and doing so with centralized APIs instead of down at each device. Analytics and AI are driving the future of automation. Big data analytics, machine learning, and AI are certainly sensationalized, but that's because they show promise. If they can be applied to customer trends and voter preferences, and many other fields with complex data points, they can be also applied to IT. A prerequisite to this is already found in SDN systems, a central point of management and networks are teeming with data to be centrally collected and processed. Many SDN systems already incorporate telemetry, analytics, and some of them leverage AI. If they don't, you can bet it's on the roadmap. And analytics and AI are important ingredients in automation, both within SDN systems and for improving 
operations contextual automated net ops on top of SDN. Since Juniper just acquired Mist systems, a timely example is of course the AI-driven Mist Cloud. Combining data points from Wi-Fi and BLE radio, wired and wide area networks, the Mist Cloud software uses AI to crunch location addled degradations and dynamics. It's able to stabilize network reliability and raise user experience problems even outside of the wireless LAN. On the NetOps side of things, Mist's AI-powered assistant, Marvis, smartens up the human touch and mitigates mistakes. Another example is found in network reliability engineering. In the data-driven SRE and NRE culture, you can't manage what you can't measure. Many SDN systems have higher order reporting, metrics, and centralized telemetry APIs, aiding in the creation of service level indicators, SLIs. SLIs are important because they map to objectives about stakeholder oriented service levels instead of those SNMP metrics or metrics that are meaningless to those outside of networking. NREs also manage errors and outages by automating around them for continuous improvement. And as SDN systems begin to incorporate AI-powered predictive analytics, NREs can use those signals to better uphold service levels with automated proactive steps to complement reactive remediation. And the last section, clouds are in the forecast. The cloud is replete with as-a-service IT offerings, but many SDN systems are still shrink-wrapped software as downloads to run on premises or in private clouds. Many networking teams would like to use or at least evaluate SDN, but jumping headlong into unboxed software like SDN is not accessible to smaller networking teams when they have the added work of learning to run and maintain SDN systems. For this reason, cloud-delivered SDN offerings are kindling more SDN adopters. This week, Juniper announced that it's taking its SD-WAN solution and launching the option for Contrail SD-WAN as a service. Cloud-based SDN for all domains of networking seems interesting, but won't be right for all customers nor all use cases. Cloud-based data collection comes with mixed benefits and drawbacks. For some, sending telemetry data to the cloud may be prohibited or prohibitively inefficient, especially in cases where certain telemetry requires a quick reaction. On the other hand, to the cloud's benefit, if many networking teams don't have the means to operate SDN, then they surely don't have the means to run sophisticated analytics or AI systems on premises. A cloud service solves for simplicity here. It also solves for quicker vendor innovation cycles and smarter processing because of the economies of scale for data storage, analytics, and now hardware-assisted AI processing based in the cloud that are enormous and incomparable. In summary, the first software-defined decade has been spectacular, and seasoned solutions are seeing a lot of production. Now, with so much contributing to SDN's innovation and reinvention, I look forward to the next odyssey and seeing what will define Software Defined. Drop a comment below to share your own anticipations. You could do that in the blog, or you can do that in the YouTube video, SoundCloud, wherever you like, or just ping me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been James Kelly, of course, reading Software Defined after a decade. Like always, thank you also for liking, sharing, and following me. And I'll leave you with a quote. This one, of course, is from Mark Benhoff. But of course, I think many people have said this. In business, we say that people overestimate what you can do in a year and underestimate what you can do in a decade.